Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Figma Fridays. My name is Klaus Muller and I am a UI designer at Roxas. Today we will be looking at how to do soft drop shadows in Figma. Drop shadows are a great way to add depth and dimension to your designs. They can be used to create distance between elements, as we can see in the example here, where you can feel that some elements are closer to you. There can also be used to set an environment and define the direction of light, as, as in here, as we can feel that the light source comes from here, generating a shadow under all the elements, creating an environment for this group of elements. Drop shadows can also be used to make an element stand out from the rest of the elements in our design. And we can also use it mostly to define the state of a certain element. As in here, we can see that the element with the drop shadow feels a bit more clickable. To create a shadow effect in Figma, we first need an environment. In this case, our environment will be a frame, we will make a white frame, and we need an element which will generate the shadow. In this case I'll be using a circle. We will make the circle of a yellow color, just to make it easier to see the contrast between the element and the shadow. And to create the shadow, we will go to the right bar and click on the plus button in effects, and it will automatically generate a drop shadow we it will be a really harsh shadow so we will want to change it so we will go to the drop shadow settings here and it will bring out these tools the x and y tools will help us define the position of the shadow the x one will help us define the horizontal position of the shadow so if we change it it will move the shadow to the right or if we go for negative numbers it will move the shadow to the left and the y, y tool will help us define the vertical position of the shadow so if we move the go to a bigger number it will move down the shadow and if we go for negative numbers it will move up the shadow this will help us define the position from where the light is coming so we can generate an environment in our design then the blur we will define how blurry or sharp our shadow is if we go for a small blur it will give us a really sharp shadow and if we go for a high blur it will give us a really blurry and soft shadow then the spread. The spread will give us how much the shadow will expand or how much it will contrast. So uh, a small spread will give us a small shadow and a big spread will give us a big shadow. This will help us to find how close or far away from, from the background is our element. Then the opacity will help us to find how how hard the shadow is and how much we can see through it. So if we go with a light opacity, it will look a bit softer. To create a soft shadow, we first need to know what's the difference between a soft shadow and a hard shadow. A uh, hard shadow has sharper edges and it's easier to see where it ends. And a soft shadow has softer edges and it makes an a softer, a softer transition between where the shadow starts and when, where the shadow ends. So, taking this into account, to have a soft shadow, we will have to have a, a bigger blur, so that it's easier to have a, a, a transition between where it starts and where it ends. So we will go with something like 25 here. And also, to make the shadow look better, something that we can do is take into account our, our background and go for a 
a lighter, a, a darker shade of, of our background instead of going for just black. This will make for a more natural shadow in our designs. This is something that we can see most in in a color background. For example, in here, if we go just for a, a, pile, a black shadow, it will look a bit weird. But if we go for a darker shade of our background, it will help us make it look a bit more natural. So it looks a bit more realistic and it also blends a bit better with the environment. Then in case with the blue we can do the same. And then we change the opacity also here because when you change the color it might change the opacity to 100 back so we will go also something like 20 or maybe 50 in this case and it gives you a softer shadow it blends a bit better with the background something else that will help us with creating softer shadows is making what is the, the layers for example in here you can add different layers to your shadow so that you have a different levels of shadows this will help make the transition between the shadow and start and end a bit easier to see. To make softer shadows, we will need to add different layers to our shadow effect. For this, we will be using a plugin in Figma called Shadow Maker. You can find this, this plugin on the community of Figma. What this plugin will do is it will add different layers to our shadow so we can control the amount of layers we want this will help make the transition between the starting of the shadow and the end of the shadow a bit more softer we can also define the color we want the shadow to be we can go for something colorful and crazy which will give the effect of light coming back from the shadow or with something normal as, as black we can also control the direction we want the shadow to go. This will make it easier for us to define the environment. So in this case, we want like a 45 degree shadow here. We will add six layers of shadows and we will define the opacity to be a bit lower. Then we add, we'll add a bit more of blur and there we have a softer shadow. As you can see, this shadow feels a lot more soft than the original shadow that Figma gives us. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in.